Well, first I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity for this talk. And well, um, when I came to Vienna, my flight got delayed 10 hours, and then the airline lost my luggage, but it has been worth so far. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay, so we are going to talk about cardinal invariance, and this is joint work with Damien. So I think that all of these already introduced in previous talks, and almost the that the intersection of every two elements of A is finite, a math family is a maximal almost disjoint family, A, the almost disjoint number, is the smallest size of a math family. If we have two functions, F, I, F and G, we say that F is almost smaller than G. If F of N is less than G of N for almost all N, so an unbounded family means unbounded in this order. The bounding number B is the smallest size of an unbounded family. And we say S, a set S, a split X, if both the intersection of X and what remains in X minus S are infinite, a splitting family is a family such that for any X, there is an element in the family that splits such X. S is the smallest size of a splitting family, and covering Miger is the smallest size of a family of Miger sets that cover the counter space or the bare space. Okay, so it is a famous result of Shella that it is consistent to have omega 1 equals b equal a less than s, and also omega 1 equals b less than a equal s. So, several first Shella constructed this model, and some other models of the same inequalities have been constructed after that. But in all of these cases, um, the four things add Cohen reals. So, we have that covering meager is equal to the continuum. But in here, I'm mostly thinking where in models of where C is omega 2. So all of the previous four things at coin reals and then covering meager is also omega 2. So what I want to talk about is a recent result that it is consistent to have omega 1 equal b equal covering meager less than s equal a. So it is getting b less than a without adding coin reals. Okay. Well, some history on this invariance. So, as I already said, everything started with uh, the result of Shella, where he used a countable support iteration of creature forcings. Then, after that, York found a, uh, obtained a model of the same inequality, but well, he used CCC forcings. So, in fact, he can get B to be kappa and A to be kappa plus for any kappa uncountable regular. Then, uh, Fisher and Stepranz constructed a model where they were the same for S. Um, and then, uh, Jorgen Berat used the matrix iterations um, to so to separate B and S and B and A, such that the distance between both of them can be as large as, as you want. One requires a measurable, but... And also, uh, York and Dilip found that the composition of the original forcing of Shella is a two-step iteration. And this is nice because, well, at least I think that uh, the original force, forcing of complicated. And then um, they found that the composition as a, two, if a, as a sigma closed star CCC, which is easier to work with. And also, Ber and Diego proved uh, that it's consistent to have omega 1 less than S less than B less than A. 
Yeah. So after all of this, you may say, is there anything uh, more to do? Uh, well, yeah, there are still many problems regarding this invariance. So uh, one question is uh, of Brendel and Raghavan, is if b equal s equal omega 1, imply that a is omega 1. This is related to a, quest, a problem of Reutemann, which says that if d is omega 1, if that implies that a is omega 1. So these questions are still open. This question is, yeah. OK. Well. So now on destructibility of ideals. Take i an ideal in omega, f a filter, and a a math family. So we say that P destroys I, an ideal I, if P adds an infinite subset of omega that is almost disjoint with every element of I. P diagonalizes the filter F if P adds an infinite set almost containing every element of F. And so, so in fact, diagonalizing a filter is the same as destroying the dual ideal. So one and two are really the same, just one with filters, one with ideals. And we say P destroys a math family A if A is no longer maximal after forcing with P. And in fact, three is a particular case of A. Yeah, so P destroys A if and only if P destroys the ideal generated by A. So now, if we want to build a model where omega 1 is b equal covering meager less than a, so we need to find a way to destroy every math family without adding Cohen and without adding dominating reals. So how to destroy ideas with forcing or diagonalizing filters. So there are, well, there are many ways to do this. Two like, of the most usual ways to diagonalize a filter is using labor forcing or the Matthias forcing, associated, uh, parameterized with F. So, well, maybe some of you already know the definitions and if you don't really, it's not needed, so I'll skip it. So, but both the labor forcing and the Matthias forcing both diagonalize F. However, um, labor forcing or it always adds a dominating real. This is not the case for Matthias, for the Matthias forcing. For example, um, a trivial example is if you take F to be the co-infinite sets, co then this is just co-enforcing, which does not add a dominating real. Uh, well, this is very trivial. A more interesting example was found by Kanjar. Who, uh, who proved that if you assume D equals C, there is an ultra filter whose Matthias does not add a dominating real. Interesting um, filters who, such that its Matthias does not add dominating reals. However, it's possible to prove that M of F adds a coin real if and only if F is not a Ramsey ultra filter. And if it is a Ramsey ultra filter, it adds a dominating real. So in other words, M of F adds a dominating real or adds a Cohen real. So 
So in order to solve our, uh, our problem, it means that we cannot use labor or we cannot use Matthias forcing for our, yeah, to solve our problem. So we need to find another way to diagonalize ideals. Now, if labor failed us and Matthias failed us, what can we do? So we have Miller to help us. And Miller, remember, Miller is super perfect, so. <laughs> okay, so on definitions, if I have P subset of omega less than omega to be a tree, and a node in P, we define sub P of S. So in other words, uh, if we have a node in here, what you immediately find uh, in here, this is sub P of S. And now in this talk, we will say that S is a, if the successors are infinite. So, so this might be strange since, yeah, so if I, if I have a node that splits into two, I'm not saying that it's a splitting node, just if it splits in infinitely many nodes. Yes, um, yeah, I, I'll mention that. Uh -huh. So, a Miller tree, we, we say P is a Miller tree if P consists of increasing sequence, that's really not important. P has a stem, T is a stem of P, is, every node of P is compatible with T and T is maximal with this property. And every node can be extended to a splitting node. So, usually, uh, when you find the definition of Miller forcing, it is common to find an extra condition that says every node splits, every node either has exactly one successor or infinitely many. And uh, yeah, as Martin said, this, uh, they, are they are forcing equivalent since asking that condition is dense in the other. So for Miller, you can say that, usual Miller forcing, you can say that, but we are going to find a parametrized version of Miller, and in that case, at least it should not always be, be the case. So that's why we are insisting in this condition. I think, uh-huh. Okay, so if we have a filter, we say that X is F positive if it has infinite intersection with every element of F. So now, uh, Savok and Sapletal introduce a parametrized version of Miller forcing. So if you have a filter F, they define QF, so it's that the Miller trees such that the successors is F positive. So by the way, in this case, we also have that, uh, that the nodes, that, that, that the trees that always split into that always have either one success or infinitely many are dense. So for this, we can always um, keep that convention. And well, this is a very nice uh, forcing, and it's and it's interesting because um, well, there are very nice characterization of when this adds coin reals, when it preserves category. So you can find really nice characterizations of that. However, it might be the case that QF 
It sometimes diagonalizes F, but sometimes it does not diagonalize it. So if you do Q of the dual of the nowhere dense ideal in, yeah, so you take NWD is the nowhere dense sets of the rational numbers. In that case, the Q, Q, Q of that diagonalizes the nowhere dense ideal, but if you take fin cross fin, it's where fin is the ideal of finite sets, and it's with the Fubini product, then the Q does not diagonalize it. Oh, sorry, yeah, star is the dual, because these are the ideals, but I define for filters. And, well, the thing is that it might be tempting to say that, well, at the first glance, one could, one could think that the generic real diagonalizes the filter. But why is this not the case? So let's say, uh, we have a Miller tree. And we wanted to prove that the generic diagonalize the filter. But what could we go, go wrong? Well, we know that the first level is positive. So if you pick an element um, that it's in the dual ideal, so we know that in the first level, or A, this set is positive, so it's not containing A. But it might be the case that A intersects guys somewhere in here, and in all splitting nodes, it does not intersect in the first level, but in some point uh, be between the splitting nodes that it has intersection with them. So if this was the case, then at least the generic real has empty intersection with A. So that means that it doesn't diagonalize it. Okay, now we want a version of Miller forcing that does diagonalize. What do we do? Well, we just say that this does not happen. Okay, so if we have a so if we have F a filter in omega. We can define f less than omega to be a filter on the finite sets minus the empty set, which will be generated by so you take every element of the filter and you take all of its non-empty sets. And this is a filter. But right now, I only care for the positive sets. So forget about this guy and just say that. If you take a collection of finite sets, we say that x is in f less than omega plus if, if and only if for every a in f, there is an s in x such that s is contained in a or it contains subsets of every element in the field. That's why we say that it cannot have the empty set because that would be cheating. So now, by split P, we denote the collection of all splitting nodes. And S, 
Split n of p is the n splitting nodes, which means that S is a splitting node and has exactly n restrictions, which are also splitting nodes. So now, given a Miller tree, we define Fp of S. It would be T minus S, such that T is in split n plus 1. of P and S is a subset of T. So in this drawing, if S is in here, you connect these guys. Mm -hmm. So from the splitting node until the next splitting nodes, you take all of these guys. No, no, it can be, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now definition, if you take F a filter, we say P is in PTF, if it's a Miller tree, and always these guys are in F less than omega plus. And we order it by inclusion. So now it can be proved that this is proper, that it diagonalizes F, and in some cases, it does not that coin or dominate ingredients. Okay, so now if we have an ideal I, we define F sigma of I as the collection of all F sigma filters that are disjoint from it. And we order it by inclusion. So it's easy to prove that this is a sigma close forcing it adds an ultra filter that it is disjoint with I, or it contains the dual. And so in this case, if I will first force with this guy and then use either the Matthias or PT, those destroy I. Okay, just if I is a math family, we just say F sigma of A instead of F sigma of I of A where I of A is the ideal generated by A. And instead of putting the finite sets, we just call it F sigma. Okay. So now, bounding and splitting. Uh, so Brendel and Ragavan proved that the original forcing used by Shela to build a model of B less than S it is forcing equivalent to first doing F sigma and then doing Matthias of the generic ultra filter. So if you iterate this, you get omega one equal B equal A, but the Matthias adds Cohen reals. So Cover and Niger goes to the other side. But now if you do the same, but instead you first force the ultra filter, but instead of using Matthias, you use PT, then you get omega one equal b equal a, and, but equals covering meter. So you do the same, but without adding coin reals. And for a, um, again, Brendel and Ragavanch, this is a little more complicated, but the forcing used by Shela to get b less than a is equivalent to you first add omega one coin reals, then you do the F sigma forcing of A, and then you use the Matthias of that. So this is a problem since in the original papers, in the original arguments, they always need to add coin reals to do some arguments, which that's bad for us, but fortunately, it turns out that in every place where the coin reals are added, you can avoid them. There is a way to get the same, but without the preliminary coin. So if you iterate F sigma of A and then doing the Matthias, you, this gives you B less than A, but you add coins. So covering meager is big. On the other hand, now if you, instead of doing Matthias, you use PT, then you will not add 
Cohen reals and well, the important thing is that both here, in both cases, you do not add Cohen reals even in the iteration. So you get b equals covering meager less than a. And that's all. Thank you.